The world of electric vehicles is a hot topic, and there's a lot of attention and money being directed towards it. With this comes great innovation, but it also attracts people looking to ride the wave and make a quick bit of cash selling snake oil. This has led to a distrust in new startups and questions being raised at the sight of visual renders and prototypes. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, as it's definitely good to have some healthy scepticism, but it would also be a shame to dismiss bright new startups based on the legacy of others. One of these new startups is called Aptera, which is Greek for wingless, as the vehicle looks a bit like a wingless plane due to its unique aerodynamic design. This is an all-electric vehicle that makes a bold claim, which is that provided you drive an average of around 30 miles a day, it will never need to be charged from a socket, due to the onboard solar charging called Never Charge. Now this obviously depends on how much the sun shines, and is something I want to look into more in this video, but I think this vehicle is going to be something pretty special one way or another. Also, if you recognise the look of this vehicle from many years ago, it may be because of its predecessor, which was a hybrid that managed 300 miles per gallon. But thanks to innovation in solar, batteries and motors, this car is now fully electric with the 100 kilowatt hour model having a claimed range of around 1,000 miles. But before going too much into the technical details, I want to explain why I think this vehicle, and others like it, will be so important to the future of mobility. Personally, I think there are a load of reasons to be excited and interested in electric vehicles, but for me, one of the main ones is their potential to help reduce the greenhouse gas emissions of the transport sector. However, although they have zero tailpipe emissions, that isn't the full story. The lifetime emissions of an electric vehicle come from three main sources. General vehicle manufacturing, battery manufacturing, and emissions from generating the electricity used to charge it. The Aptera can combat two of these. Battery manufacturing emissions can be reduced, because it is possible to use a smaller pack as a result of the vehicle's high efficiency, giving 250 miles of range with just 25 kilowatt hours of storage. And also there are almost no emissions from the energy used to charge from the solar panels. And a final point is the potential for the vehicle to provide power to your home through vehicle to grid connections if it is sufficiently charged. With this I could also imagine a car park full of these vehicles, where ones that are fully charged are able to generate power for those still charging. So what is it about the design that makes this vehicle so special? I won't dwell on this too much as I want to look more into the infinite range or never charge capabilities of this vehicle, but I do think it's worth a mention because it's pretty interesting. Firstly, the unusual shape of this vehicle makes it extremely aerodynamic. It is designed around the most aerodynamic shape, which is a teardrop. This is because a teardrop slices through the air and allows it to smoothly rejoin back together at the back. As the front wheels are detached from the main body, it also allows them to be put in an aerodynamic shroud, without causing issues when steering, unlike other low drag vehicles which have had to have exposed front wheels, like the Volkswagen XL1. This has led to a drag coefficient of just 0.13, which is extremely low compared to about 0.45 for most pickup trucks and 0.23 for the Tesla Model 3, which is already pretty impressive. The next design feature is the use of in-hub electric motors, which by directly driving the wheels, reduces drivetrain losses, such as friction in the transmission. Also, by using composites for the body, the weight has been greatly reduced. But in my opinion, even more interestingly is the use of AI generative design. This uses computer algorithms to generate components that have no excess material while still maintaining the required strength. This drag reduction, increased efficiency, and lightweight design means every mile driven requires only a small amount of energy from the battery. But is it enough to allow the vehicle to never be charged? The Aptera vehicle has a number of solar configurations, but I'm going to look at the 700 watt system, which from what I can tell is the largest setup with panels both on the hood and rear hatch. For this, I'm going to look at using this vehicle in both California and England, which, as I'm sure you're aware, have very different weather. According to the calculator on Aptera's website, California is in Sun Zone 8, whilst England, of course, is in Sun Zone 1. By their estimates, this gives the vehicle a daily never charge range of about 30 miles in California and 20 miles in England. 
For reference, the average commute in the US is quoted as 29 miles, meaning in California you would never need to charge. So let's look into these estimates a bit closer. As the Aptera vehicle can do an estimated 10 miles per kilowatt hour, the solar panels would have to generate around 3 kilowatt hours in California and 2 kilowatt hours in England to meet their estimates. The 700 watt rating for the solar roof means that in full direct sunlight it would produce 700 watts. This situation could also be referred to as a 100% load factor or sometimes capacity factor. We can therefore use the load factor in a country to predict how much energy will actually be captured. But firstly, the positioning of the panels on the vehicle would also likely lead to reduced capturing efficiency, as the sun won't hit all the panels directly, spreading out the solar intensity. It's hard to accurately say how much the efficiency will be affected, as it depends on many factors. But when placing panels flat, it normally reduces the efficiency by around 20%. So we'll use this as a rough estimate. To adjust for this, we'll take down the rating of the solar panels to 560 watts, which is 80% of 700 watts and will be used from here on out. Let's first look at California. A paper by Breti et al says that the load factor of solar panels in California is as high as 33% in summer and goes down to 18% in winter. This accounts for the fact that the sun is stronger in the summer and is in the sky for longer. This means that in 24 hours, the 560 watt array will deliver 4.4 kilowatt hours. This would therefore give 44 miles of range, though it would of course vary from day to day. Now for winter, here the 18% load factor would result in 2.4 kilowatt hours of charge or 24 miles of range, which is still very reasonable and would cover most of that average 29 mile commute. Now for England, as provided by the national grid, the load factor in summer is around 20% and goes down to 2.5% in winter, which is extremely depressing. Using the same method as before, this gives a daily generation of 2.7 kilowatt hours in summer and a massive 0.34 kilowatt hours in winter, or 27 miles in the peak of summer and 3.4 miles in the depths of winter. However, these are average daily values, so there'll potentially be quite high variations from day to day. So although you might not be getting very far on solar power alone in English winters, this solar system has real potential to make a difference in brighter months and sunnier parts of the world, which in reality is most of the world. Obviously there could be challenges with shade on the panels from buildings, trees or multi-storey car parks, but I would imagine people driving these vehicles would try hard to avoid these. And even if the Aptera had no solar charging, I think the insane efficiency alone is enough to make the vehicle worthy of your attention. And because of the insane efficiency, even on a pretty standard 50kW fast charger, the car could get 500 miles of range in an hour or about 8 miles per minute. This is pretty exciting, because there is a rumour it could be compatible with Tesla's supercharger network at a reduced 50 kilowatt speed. Another final point is Aptera's right to repair plan, which allows customers to buy spare parts when something is damaged. I really like this and wish more manufacturers did this, as it will improve the customer experience and help prevent vehicles being scrapped too early, further increasing its overall sustainability. Now all I need to do is save up and buy one. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learnt something new. If you did, make sure to leave a like and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel as we're nearly at 30,000, which is absolutely crazy. On the screen somewhere around here, I'm going to put a table of the results I calculated versus what was on Aptera's website. I think the results in California look pretty close and obviously my estimates are quite rough, so I think these all seem reasonable. However, I am concerned at how much energy they said they could get in England. I'll be really interested to know what method they used to work this out versus the method that I use. One of my main concerns for their numbers is how close the winter in zone one is to the winter in zone eight, as I'm pretty sure there should be quite a large difference here as shown by the load factors that I used in my calculation. Either way, I think this is a really cool vehicle and it could definitely get a significant amount of charge in places like California and it's still really interesting for use in places like England because of its really high efficiency. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.